So last weekend, I had a game plan. We're going to take everything out that is Valentine's Day. We're going to pull out spring stuff. We're going to put winter away. We're going to get some Easter stuff out. And we're going to get this house organized. We're going to declutter it, open the space up. I want this done. Then you ask me how much actually got done. You know that I've told you a bunch of different times that I'm an ADHD brain. Well, you know how it goes. Once you open that junk drawer and it looks all kinds of, oh my gosh, your thoughts and feelings for the rest of the day are shot because you're going to be cleaning up that junk drawer. So, hey, welcome to Unscripted Conversations. I'm Ashley. Ashley from Simply Blessed Designs, and I cannot wait to talk to you about a couple of different things today. I pulled out all my spring stuff, like I said, and Easter stuff, and I was ready to decorate the house, right? Do you have a decor style? I was farmhouse, and I'm still farmhouse. I was farmhouse before farmhouse was even a trend, y'all. It's called growing up on a farm, and it's just what you put out. You got cows in the backyard, you might as well have them in the house too. So, I have been scrolling and looking and all these different decor styles, and I have always ventured more towards the rustic, antique vibes, you know, I love it old and dirty. I say that all the time when I'm making stuff. Do you know I make stuff? I love making stuff. Y'all got to check that out too. So I have come across this decor style and I love it. It's called cottage core. Have you ever heard of cottage core? Well, cottage core is basically the romanticized view of royal, of rural life. Think of Rolling meadows in old cottages with ivy growing up the walls where the loudest sounds you hear are nature. Chirping of crickets, birds first thing in the morning. And all this is how life existed before the modernized life that we live now. Days revolve around tending to the land, bacon from scratch, just sitting outside in a swing or in a chair and just listening to nature. What do you hear? Well, you hear birds chirping, right? You hear crickets, you hear frogs. Do you love these sounds? Do they bring you back to your childhood? Do you remember back in the day, we had nothing to worry about. My cousins and I, we would go down to the creek behind my nanny and my granddaddy's house. They lived on a big farm. Well, it was a dairy farm until I was born in 1980. And then they changed it over to a beef farm. And uh, let me get back to subject here. So we always grew up around cows and chickens and big gardens. And my cousins and I, we would go out and play in the barns. We would run through the silo. We would go down to the creek and see if we could catch crawdads and, you know, barefooted in the creek. Those were the days. What happened? Something happened. Now we run around, we have piles of stuff everywhere, and it's it's crazy. So the cottage core, it wasn't born out of the blue. It didn't just come up. But do you remember movies like Pride and Prejudice or The Secret Garden movie, book, anything? You remember that, right? They are basically what cottage core is. It's a way of life. It's an emphasis on handmade crafts and DIY projects, which are right up my alley, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Hand knit scarves. No, I can't do that knit, crochet. Y'all, I could barely even sew a button on that Sam. You better call Sam if you need something sewed on. I mean, I could probably sew a button on, but I can't promise you what it's going to look like. But like this day and time, you see everybody doing sourdough, baking bread, handwriting notes, not just pop a text or pop an email, you know? It's a lot of nature-centric activities, gardening, picnicking, Walking through the woods, down the road, barefooted in the creek, like I was just talking about. It brings you back to nature. Natural elements, floral prints, flowers, wood, so much wood, naturals. But it also has a touch of antiques and vintage things as well. 
way I like to do it is when I set up a vignette or a little reading nook in my house, I want that space to tell a story. I want to be able to look at it and say, this table I got from a thrift store, but it's, you know, old. And on it is a doily. That was my nanny's and she always kept it in the living room. As soon as you walked in the house, that was one of the first things you see. And there's a candy dish right there. My nanny always kept a candy dish on top of this doily. And it always had the different kinds of candies in it. You know, anything like that, that brings you back your memories. It doesn't matter if you got it from the thrift store or a yard sale last weekend. It does not matter at all. I want my house, every corner, every space to tell a story. Items like I was talking about from my grandparents, my parents, or even if I got it at a yard sale or thrift store, like I said. Instead of shiny modern finishes, it's more of a gravitation towards worn, loved, lived in. It's about space that feels like it has been passed down through generations and generations, even though they literally were set up last week. And nature, it's not just about beauty. It's about peace. It's not just cute old things sitting around your house. It's about memories of how you grew up, your childhood, peace. It should make you happy. It should be your comfort zone. Seasons change slowly. Flowers bloom at their own will. Everything happens in God's timing, right? And that is what it brings you back to. Nature, memories, peace. In Job 12, he tells us to ask the animals, the birds, the earth, and everything, and let them speak to you. Let them teach you. The life, the breath of every little thing is in God's hands. He created us for a reason. He knows how many hairs are on every single one of our heads, which is crazy because if y'all see my shower, y'all think I was bald. (laughs) I lose hair crazily, but it's okay. Because in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know I have the plans for you. They are the plans for good to give you a future and a hope, confident hope confident hope in God. There it is again. The last three, no, the last two, this is number three podcast that you've heard me talk about is confident hope. You have confidence in God. You have confidence in his plan. You have hope in his plan. Sometimes it's just hard to let him lead us, right? You want to have control. That's going to be a podcast coming up soon. But the best thing about cottage core decor is that there are no rules. There's no nothing to follow except for your thoughts and your feelings that come from your heart. Getting back to what I was saying about my junk drawer. There are so many different ways to organize your life and you can save money while you're doing it. And this is how Cottage Core, I've incorporated that decor style. Everybody wants to have an organized life. Everybody wants to save money, right? And all of you most likely know the Proverbs 31 woman. I'm going to start another episode about that too. I think I might even do a Bible study on the Proverbs 31 woman. It's what I need. I tell you all the time, I talk to me because this is what I need to hear. So what are some ways that we can organize our life and save money? Those are very important things to me. So the first thing I can think of is clutter. I check the mail every single day at lunchtime when I come in. I get the mail out the box. 90% of it is junk. I just go ahead and throw that in the trash. Well, then there are envelopes. I'm on my lunch break. I only have an hour. And most of the time, by the time I'm in the house, I've already used 15 or 20 minutes of it driving home. Or making Zena Grace go potty because that's her potty time. So all I do is I throw it in a place on the counter, the island, any of them. And what happens when I do that day after day? It gets piled up. Well, Sam went to the doctor because he had a cold. So, of course, he's got the paperwork from the doctor's office. Then when you get your prescription filled, if you need one of those, that comes with paperwork, too. And we just make piles upon piles upon piles of stuff. What do you do with them? 
You take one day and you pick something. You go through that stack of papers on your counter and make sure everything has a place. I have binders. And if Sam listens to this, he's going to laugh at this point. He picks on my binders, y'all. I love a three ring binder. I have one that is labeled house. I have one that is labeled the car. Every vehicle we have, actually. I have one that says Zena Grace. I have one with each of my children's names on it. I have binders. That's how I organize anything and everything that pertains to that person or that vehicle or that item goes in that binder. He laughs. Well, I can tell you exactly where everything is. It might take me a minute to find it in the binder. I do have dividers in there, but you know, it might take me a minute, but I can produce it for you. And then there's another space that we always use. Let me know how many junk drawers you have in your house. Or if it's not classified as a junk drawer, which which really classifies a junk drawer anyways, what does it have to have in that drawer to be classified as a junk drawer? That's always been my question. Me? A bunch of stuff thrown in there. I have one junk drawer that I am so proud of, okay? I went to the Dollar Tree and you know they have those little tiny little baskets. They have rectangles, they have squares, they have big ones, they have thin, small ones, all different sizes. I took, now y'all listen, okay? I took a piece of paper. I think I use parchment paper, but you can use any kind of paper. And I put it in the bottom of my drawer and I cut it to size. That way, when I got to Dollar Tree, I could lay out my paper on the floor. It's not gross. Don't even say anything. I'm not eating it. I could lay out my paper on the floor. And I took those baskets and I was laying them out and moving them around like, okay, I can put this here, this here, this one will fit here. And so I could fit the exact number of baskets I needed. And they come in packs of three. I was opening them up. Yo, I I was, but I was going to buy them. That way I knew exactly how many baskets I needed. In order to fill up my junk drawer. It's a pretty good idea, huh? The other three junk drawers I have in the house, that just has stuff thrown in there. It's on my to-do list to clean out. Yeah. Where else? Closets. Don't even get me started on closets. I don't know what we were thinking when we designed the layout of our house. It's open. It's so open. The rooms, they're they're big. We were moving in stuff and we were unpacking and everything. And I just stop and I go, Sam, he's like, yeah, we don't have any closets. He went, huh? Oh, I was like, yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a closet on each bedroom. But other than that, there are no closets in this house. So we had to come up with some pretty inventive ways for storage. And where do you think all that stuff went? Our walk-in closet in our bedroom, which looks like something exploded in the back room of a store warehouse. Okay, yeah. My clothes are hung up neat, though. I do organize those by sleeve length and color. Don't ask. I'm weird. OCD here? Not there. It happens, right? So this is what we can do to fix all this. One day a week. If you work every day like I do, one day on the weekend. Pick one day to clean out one drawer, reorganize it, and make it neat. Or pick one closet a weekend, clean it out, reorganize it. Throw things away. Donate them. If it is broken or missing pieces, it needs to go. You think you're going to fix it? If you've held on to that object for six to nine months or longer and you have not fixed it yet honey you're not going to fix it i'm talking to myself where's the mirror you're not going to fix it get rid of it if you don't want to throw it in the trash put all the pieces together in a box or a bag take it to the thrift store and say hey this is broken but you could easily fix this here are the pieces and let them have it let someone else have it that will use it and love it like you. Maybe they could pick up something like that from the thrift store, take it home. Maybe they're into cottage decor and it could be their old thing 
that has a story, but it's new because I just got it at thrift store. You know what I mean? One thing that never gets cleaned out, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. When was the last time you cleaned out your underwear in your sock drawer? Like, really? If it's funky, throw it away. If it does not have a match and has not had a match in years or has not graced your body, whether it's on your hind parts or your feet in years, throw it away. Throw it away. Get rid of it. Ecclesiastes 3 says there is a time for everything. In verse 6, it says a time to keep and a time to throw away. Luke 12, 15 says guard yourself against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. It's measured in the contents of your heart. So number one is declutter. Number two is do something that makes you happy. Find a place in your home where you can just create and try something new. Me, I have a whole room. It's what I do. I love it. It's my office. It's my craft room. It's now my podcast studio. And it's storage. And it's also my child's bed when he comes to visit. (laughs) So yes, you can take any space in your room. If you don't have a room, you take any space in your home, whether it's just the kitchen table, put up a little desk, get a rolling cart. And roll that cart out next to you when you're sitting at that kitchen table or your recliner or wherever. Put up a card table. Get a TV tray. Roll that rolling cart over there and make something with your hands. Make things by hand that make you happy. I do that. Many of you know I'm a crafter. I love to make things. Some things are, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Other things are, what in the world was that? What was I thinking? I am so sanding that off and doing something else with that because that is not, what do we say? That's not what I meant to do. Yeah. Making things by hand makes me happy. Talking with you makes me happy. Do you know that when I started my business, I told Sam, I just want to touch one person. I want to give one person confident hope in God and themselves. I want to make one person smile and believe that they can do anything they put their mind to. One person. My preacher says that. I talk about my preacher a lot because I learn a lot from him. I listen to him. I do. He says, pick one person. Once you have done what you need to do with that one person, pick another. Whether it's one person a day, one person a week, one person a month. Please don't do one person a year. You need a little bit more than that. (laughs) Pick that one person and make it your goal to do something positive for them. Whether it's an act of kindness or just to be there for them. Or even, like I said last time, love them from a distance. Some you just have to love from a distance. I will pray for you. I promise. And not like that song, I pray something falls on your head. No, no, no. Really pray for them. I always wanted to put in anyone's brain to give them confidence in themselves, that they believe in themselves. You can do what you want to do. If you want to paint, Pick up a paintbrush and paint. Have y'all seen me paint? It's a hot mess. I cannot do it. But I try because I love painting. I can paint solid objects, no problem. We got that down pat. I can distress. But if we're painting scenes and people and mountains and y'all, I tried to paint an ocean once. An ocean. An ocean where it meets the sand and then it meets the sky. And it looked like something blue had blown up on the page, sprinkled with a little bit of brown. Did I give up? I did not. I am not going to give up. So like we said, do something that makes you happy. Something that brings you joy. Do you know the difference between happiness and joy? Happiness is an emotion. That's not joy. Emotions are natural reactions to situations around us. My kid comes home from college. I am happy. My kid comes home from North Carolina. I am happy. My kid makes A's in college. That brings me joy. 
so much joy. I wholeheartedly believe that our joy is not dependent on our circumstances. Joy is the ability to be content, believing that God is working all things for our good. When doubt fills my mind, you give me comfort, hope, and cheer. Psalms 94, 19. Do not be scared to try something new. Who cares if it isn't perfect? Just try it. And one main rule is make sure you have fun while you're doing it. All right, y'all. So number one was declutter. Number two is do something that makes you happy. Number three, create a space in your home where you can relax. And I mean, relax. Put the phone down, turn the TV off, sit it in a relaxing chair, whether it's a recliner or just a, a footed chair. Is that what they're called? What are they called? A foot chair, chair with feet that does not rock, does not recline. Read a book, study something, learn something new. I mean, I would personally recommend the Bible, but you do you. You read whatever makes you happy. Steep a cup of hot tea, put plants in your space, make it inviting and relaxing how you love it. It doesn't matter if it's on trend right now, if it's this style or that style or whatever. If we kept up with trends, we would be redecorating and repainting the inside of our houses like every six months. So the next thing I want you to do is I want you to get up early, like really early, like before 5, 6 a.m. early. I promise you'll love it. You're up before your kids or your grandkids or anyone else in the house. You will have hours to yourself to drink coffee, to putter around, to get work done or just relax. And this also means that you'll be tired and you'll want to be in bed by nine. And it's good for you. It is good for you. Proverbs 31 15 tells us she gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the work for the day. It is good for you. I get asked all the time, why do you wake up around 5 a.m.? So I can have my me time. I wake up in the morning. I do start my coffee. Then I go into the bathroom and do my bathroomy things. Then, you, you know, when you wake up, wash your face, brush your teeth, go potty, all that stuff. Then I fix my coffee and then I sit down and it is my God time. I read the Bible. I do my Bible study. I write out, I do my prayer. And I have a couple people that I send this out to because they asked me to keep them accountable. I read one chapter in the Bible a day. The next thing, and this is a big thing, is I want you to grow something, anything. You can do a big garden. You can do a small garden. You can do herbs and containers, a house plant. The more things that are at your house that require care, the stronger your connection to your home actually is. Plants can be beautiful, but they can be useful also. Not only do they give you oxygen, but most important thing about them is the care that they take. You have to take care of them. You cannot sit it in a corner, water it once every three or four months that you think of it and think it's going to be beautiful unless you have a snake plant. That's what I do with my snake plant because I I forget about it all the time. And hey, she's thriving. She is great. But all the rest of my plants, they are in my face. Every time I am at my kitchen sink, I am looking at my plants. They're in my kitchen window. And when they start to droop, I know, oh, I have to water them. I was going to get this plan. I was like, okay, every Saturday morning, I'm going to water my plants. That lasted for like a month. I don't know what happened. I just didn't do it long enough to make a habit. But, you know, maybe that sounds a bit wacky. Plants give us something to take care of. And the emotional response that creates joy. You get to care for something, nurture something, watch it grow, watch it bloom, watch it. It's just that feeling, just like we had when we were going to grow a garden. We planted the garden. We were so excited. Even though it died, we had to do it again. It's fine. Once it started growing, it was awesome. I had vegetables up to my eyeballs, seeing how my husband does not eat them. But that's a different story. Oh, wait, you've already heard that. If you haven't, go back and listen to episode number one. 
Jeremiah 29 says they will build houses, they will settle down, they will plant gardens, and they will eat what they produce. Grow something, plant a garden, grow a plant, grow herbs in containers. If you live in a small apartment, get a little bucket and grow some herbs in it. Proverbs say those who work their land will have an abundant amount of food. If you grow it there, it will grow. Hopefully. Didn't I say that we were going to talk about organization and saving money? When you grow things, it's cheaper. When you cook at home, it's better for you. I want you to take out a piece of paper and I want you to write 30 meals that your family will consistently eat without complaining. I complain when I cook sometimes like, what was I thinking? This did not go together. Did I put salt in this? And then I want you to make another list. Meals that you only eat occasionally due to the season or the expense or maybe your family's picky. So you only fix it every once in a while. In seasons, you only want to do fresh fruit when it grows. You only want to do fresh vegetables out the garden. If you don't can, if you don't freeze, if you don't, you know, save your vegetables by any means that you choose to. Root cellar. I think I want to make a root cellar. We have high hopes and dreams, don't we? But you write down meals that you will only eat occasionally. So then you take those two lists and you make a master grocery list. And that way, all of these meals that you have listed out, you have the food available at your house. So anytime you need a meal idea, you pull out this list and you already have the food. And then you say, okay, well, what can I prepare ahead of time to put in the freezer or the fridge, like casseroles or meatballs or cookie dough or whatever it is you like to eat. Make a couple of meals that you can just pull out and heat up real quick for those nights when you are late, when you're tired, when you've been running all over because your kids, grandkids, neighbors, kids, nephews, nieces, whoever have ball games and you know it's getting ready to start. You wanna be able to just pull out that meal, Pop it in the microwave, the oven, the air fryer, the Instapot, whatever, and have it cooking. Or crockpot meals. Get you a Ziploc baggie, put everything you need for your crockpot meal in there. If you're using the meat, put it in there. Seal it up, put it in the freezer. Chicken fajita crockpot. And that way, when you're ready to cook it, you pull it out, you put it in the crock pot in the morning, you set it on low, and hey, supper's done when you get home. It's homemade. You didn't have to buy it. Buying food these days, when you go out to a restaurant or even a drive-thru, oh my gosh, you are not going to go anywhere and spend under $20, $30 anymore. And then I also want you to make a list of things that you would like to try. Get on Pinterest, start a board, recipes I want to try to make. Name it anything, make it private, make it public. Put some recipes in there of things that you will remember that you want to try. Wait, it just popped in my head. This is what I tried to do and I failed. I'm getting ready to try it again. Poor Gertie, oh my goodness. Sourdough bread. You see everybody in the world making sourdough bread right now. It's easy. Oh, just a little flour, a little water. Oh, but you need rye flour. Oh, but you need all purpose. But no, don't do that. You gotta get bleached, unbleached, unbleached always. What in the world? Sourdough is an amazing thing. I love to eat it. I tried to grow it and obviously it didn't work. Gertie was doing really well until I forgot about her when the boys came home for Christmas. And then Gertie started to change colors and grow a little fuzz. So yeah, I had to get rid of her. And I haven't started her back, but I need to because it's not just about the bread to me. I mean, that's an awesome thing. I want to be able to make my own bread because, you know, this day and time, they put preservative, additives, dyes, everything else under the sun and everything you buy. And I can make bread that's natural, made by me. But it's not just about that end product of bread. Although, who can resist a slice of freshly baked bread, whether it's rolls or whatever. It's all about the process, kneading the dough, feeling the texture, inhaling the warm aroma as it bakes. 
It's a grounding experience. Remember back in the day when every meal was a labor of love, not just from a fast food place or out of convenience. I have to laugh because my nanny, we would always go over there to visit her and she would, you know, if you were going to your grandparents' house, they were going to try to feed you. No ifs, ands, or buts. Are you hungry? Did you eat today? Let me fix you some food. And then she says, well, I don't know if I have anything that I can fix. So you just, you sit in here and talk to granddaddy for a while or you do this or you do this for me and I'll see what I can pull together together and then about 20 30 minutes later you walk in the kitchen and there is a full spread like you are fixing to eat thanksgiving supper on the table like i thought you didn't have anything (laughs) a sandwich would have been fine cheese on bread little mayo little tomato and remember when it was a labor of love they didn't go buy things well they did but you know not stuff from restaurants or fast food they made everything by hand i have tried my best with my boys growing up we eat at home you want pizza that's fine let's make some pizza dough we got cheese what do you want to put on it we got ham we got pepperoni what what do you want we got vegetables make things with your hands you will appreciate it a lot more and all of this talk about cottage core is it's not just about decor it's not just about decluttering it's not about saving money but about getting back with nature and creating things with your hands it's getting back to the king back to god the sole reason and purpose we were put on this earth it's to get grounded and get back to the beautiful things of nature when was the last time you walked outside when it was a sunset it's supposed to rain next week when was the last time you just sat outside on the porch and listened to the rain and just smelled rain I love the smell of rain just like when somebody's cutting their grass it smells amazing get back to recognizing listening to pay attention seeing all of the beautiful things of nature. Romans 12 says to give our bodies back to God because of all he has done for us. Do not copy the behaviors of this world. Let God transform you into a new person by the way you think. The same Romans 12, but the message version hits a little bit different. I'm going to read it to you. It says this. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, your going to work, your walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Do not become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, Fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and you quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you and develops well-formed maturity in you. When you put God first, when you give your life to him, he will give you all of the fruits of your life that you have been waiting for. So don't worry about those materialistic items of this world. Declutter. Let it all go. Clear out your space and you clear out your mind in the process. Get right with nature. Get back to God and the things that he created. Thank you so much for listening to episode three of Unscripted Conversations with me. I will see you back here next week for number four. Thanks, y'all.